Our guest today is Mercedes Narcisse. She's a high energy businesswoman, nurse, and mother, and she's running for New York State Senate in the 19th Senatorial District. Welcome, Marcy. Thank you. Yes, thank yes, you for yes. being here. Oh, thank you for coming and, you know, for being here us. to support me. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, you have been, you know, a fixture in Garnarsi for decades. You had a medical supply business, you've been a nurse, you've done all these types of things. Why did you think it was the right time now to run for office? Um, honestly, I uh, I don't know if you're aware that I ran for city council in 2013. And after that, I, uh, for some reason or others, I ended up um, doing the entry program. Mm -hmm. And when I'm listening to the young men and young women coming back and forth in jail and looking at my my life story with my own children being a single mom and being able to do so much with them and then by the way my first one is about to graduate medical school my second one graduated from actuary science and oh, finance nice. so i realized that i'm a blessed woman and there's so much i can do with those young minds and then i keep talking to them i was able to get to make them understand you don't have to sell back on the street and they're very happy we've been having conversation and then people in the district when the seat opened they keep on asking me to run and then one day i was having a conversation with one of the reentry young men and he dare me to run for office really? because okay. he trusts me he said i never trust anyone but i trust you and i think you should because i was talking about politics and i let him know that i, I ran for office and i don't want to bother sometimes because it's so much you know the bureaucracy the things and uh, it was too much right. and then he encouraged me he told me that he would love for me to be in office and for him to work together with me and then mm -hmm. i was thinking about it listening to the people in the area and there i am Running for the state senate. I, I love it. I mean, it's a great story. But in terms of, like, you talked about reentry programs, mm -hmm. are, is that some of the things that you like to focus on when you're running? What are some of the yes. issues that are important I, I, to you? Actually, yes. It's mm -hmm. very important to me because what they make me realize, um, adapt, when I adopted my daughter, um, I was her fourth home. Mm -hmm. And I realized everybody thought I was crazy. And I realized all she needed is opportunity. Okay. And then when I'm, she, now she's 19. She's oh, second wow. semester of college. And what I'm seeing through this, through the lens of seeing those young men and young women, and I feel like pushing education is the way to go. Because most of us, we don't have money to give. But once you have basic education, you have a structure, you can do better for yourself. And that's one of my focus. I have five different areas as single mom struggling, paying bills, and paying bills. So there's a lot of things that I, I truly believe that we can work better in our community and improve. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so just to get into the, the political lay of the land, I know, Mercedes, you've been involved in politics a long time, and your district, Canarsie, happens to be like the seat of Brooklyn Clubhouse Power. And I understand that Frank Sedia, who's the boss of the Kings County Democratic Party, lays claim to being the godfather of one of your children. Yes, he is. Actually, I, uh, Frank and I go way back. Um, I was part of the club, um, I'm going to tell you honestly. But I grew up, and what I'm seeing in the district, it, it needs um, more than politics. It needs somebody that cared, that been tested and tried. It's not about cronyism, like people just putting the people in office, but it is about the folks, the people in the district. The voters have to have their voice. And for me to have the opportunity to get the voters not only to, to just vote, but to be part of the family, the community, and really engage. And uh, I'm tired of seeing the voters' uh, suppression and oppression, and sometimes I can say depression as mm. a nurse. <laughs> so right. I, I, I need to see more of, because... A lot of people give up in the in the area because of the same thing. Oh, there's powerful. Who's the power? The power is the people. The people right. speak, okay. and that's it. That's the end of the story. I got almost 6,000 votes last time I ran for office. Right. So well, you, the people speaking. So, so the presently, the person that's in office, even though she got elected twice in a special election, she never even reached one, one I, I would say, one-third of the vote that I got. Do you think that your opponent... Uh, Roxanne Bersad, do you think she's kind of like a, a puppet of, of the club? Or? Uh, basically, I'm saying I don't like to talk about people, but if it's quite frankly, yeah. why would somebody be elected with less than a thousand votes in an area that have 318 folks living there? So that's, that's kind of like, it, it, it's just like the people are not there. So if the people are not there, this means somebody else is there. Somebody's uh, uh, interest is there. 
So and, that's what I'm talking about. And, and related to that is, mm -hmm. it, as Brooklyn is an immigrant uh, community, community. Okay. Yeah. Yes, it is. And it's yeah. always the immigrants up. It does seem like it's the Haitian Americans turn. And mm -hmm. do you think that the club is kind of keeping down the Haitian Americans and the they're keeping down everybody, if I have wow. to say, if it's that right. way, because we're talking about 800 votes. And the person got elected in the assembly less than a year and promoted. My children have to spend a year in a classroom. So you're mm -hmm. telling me you run for assembly less than a year, you're already promoted to be yeah. in the state Senate with less than a total of 2,000, less than, than, than 1,000 something mm -hmm. votes. And right. I got almost 6,000 votes. I ran for city council. That was my first time. So mm -hmm. something is not right. And I don't want to, I don't look, you know, myself personally, I don't talk about people right now my focus thank god for that is just about the people it's really frankly about the children that i'm seeing every day people that cannot pay their rent people that live in the district and looking for opportunity that's all i'm looking for well i'm, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the rent i'm glad yes. you mentioned the rent because you know recently there was uh, the council, city council voted mm -hmm. to rezone mm -hmm. you know, east new york mm -hmm. a huge portion of east new york mm -hmm. and a lot of people housing advocates are a little bit concerned that that's going to mean gentrification they're going to be pushed out. They're not going to be able to afford to live there. How would you tackle that issue? Basically, we have to talk about a range that makes sense. Because when you look at East New York demographic, people that live in East New York, for me, I'm a business person. As you can see, my child, the second one, graduated from actuary science and finance. Number doesn't lie. So if you live in the area, right, if you're making fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars $16,000, now what we're talking about housing, low-cost housing, what, what low-cost housing are we talking about? If the people that have been working in the area cannot stay in the area, that's a problem. So we need to structure it in a way that the numbers that we're talking about make sense for the people that live in the area, or else you're pushing them out. It's unfair because they've been there, they've been struggling in the area. So if you really want to make changes and you make, to, you, you, I mean, what we call progressive, right. we have to keep people in the area that have been living in the area for so long. Give them the opportunity. That's all I'm asking for. And we look at the numbers and how much the mean, what's the average of people getting paid in that area. And then when you create that structure, you real about it because people right now, some people, some folks are making less than fifteen thousand yeah, dollars a year. Believe real, it or not, real poverty, yes. it's real. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it's working poor. We're talking about. Exactly. So me as a person that been through it all, mm -hmm. poor and 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 I would say average. So it, it is a problem. So we need to really give opportunity. And for me, shelters should not be. It should be transitional. It should not be permanent. That's a, that, yeah, right. It should not be permanent. Permanent. That's the way I feel. There, yeah. There's a. Uh, as you're going to be in the state house, uh, recently there was a controversial bill they passed mm -hmm. about um, kids that were put in in uh, detention mm -hmm. centers for youth. Mm -hmm. They were too far upstate, mm -hmm. and they wanted to put them in their community. Mm -hmm. So they passed a law mm -hmm. that these kids would actually go to their community, mm -hmm. so they'd be closer to home. But I now, entry. <laughs> but a lot of them now, mm -hmm. a lot of these these mm -hmm. detention homes are being investigated because the kids sneak out, mm -hmm. they're back on the street, they're back in the neighborhood, they left. Mm -hmm. So uh, how do you feel about that program and how it works? And would the you program like needs improvement? Need, uh, improvement, in its supervision, if we really want to bring back them back, I mean them back to the community. And what I realize more and more for me, if we can get the family members, especially when we're talking about 16, 17 years, if we can get them more engaged and more having because a lot of the young men and young women that I'm seeing myself personally, a lot of them have mental issues that need to be addressed. Oh, and if that, they're not addressed appropriately as a nurse, I'm telling you, it's not, we're not going to go anywhere. We can create all kind of things, mm -hmm. fantasy land that we need. But we need to think about what is the consequences when you bring somebody that has mental issue that's not being addressed and you put them back in the community. Mm -hmm. Those are my concerns. And those are the things that I will offer because I have a, 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 a experience that God allowed me to be able to, to help. So just to reiterate, passion. you're in favor of them being closer to home. But you the, think most there definitely. needs to be more right. supervision. More supervision and program. You cannot just put people, you cannot yeah, just exactly. put people there and then give them a little meal there and think they're going to satisfy the teenagers. They're growing. They need somebody that can be there and, uh, and address whatever the mental or, or psychological, emotional issue they're dealing with. Because if you're not addressing those kind of issues, you're not going anywhere. Right. You're going to have disaster. It's a, it's a recipe for disaster. It's true. I That's agree. the way I feel. I, I agree. And I, mm -hmm. I think just like tying it in, you know, mm -hmm with the youth, the young people who are having, you know, issues and also the poverty we were just talking mm -hmm. about. There's a lack of jobs. Mm -hmm. There's there's definitely a lack of, of jobs. So what are some of your ideas for kind of bringing some jobs into the community, getting people hired, getting them working? And um, 
first of the thing that I'm, I'm always looking at is reinvestment act. We're talking about it all the time. Mm-hmm. Are we for real about it? Mm-hmm. I'm not going to create the perfect world, but I'm, I'm here to sit down and review how we do business. Because if you're telling me you invest in the area, you're having a tax break, so what is it for the community? How are we going to create a job? And job that makes sense. Not talking about like I'm giving $10 an hour job and then I'm done. You're not Living growing wage. the community. Because if you want the growth, you have to be fair with the process. You have to give the administrative level jobs. You have to create skill work. Because we're talking about it right now. We know about Sandy happened in the in my community where I was out. So if we're gonna have a uh, plan, the federal money to come in. So we have to prepare people. We have to give them the skill. Are we talking about the young men coming home? So. We have to make sure we have plan for them to have a skill too, right. because not everybody can be a doctor or engineer or a nurse, but you can have a skill. You can you can do el- uh, electrical engineering. You can be doing computers. You can do certain things that people can do, and then they still make average. And we're talking about plumber. Forget it. So yeah, <laughs> so there is a lot of high paid job that people are not looking at. And if we're talking about the environment, so what we need the construction that gonna take place. Our, our young men, young women, ready for those kind of jobs. So that's what is a community. You have to look at what you have. To me, what I do in business or even raising my kids is what you have. You make a plan and you go over the plan. You say, what's going to work? What is the short term goal? What is the long term goal? What can I do here? And willing to work with it. A lot of people pass legislation and they just like it's over. But they're not sitting and take time yeah, to see what is the consequences for short term and long term. Develop it. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. They're too quick. So just like I want a law move here, on. I want a law here, move on. <laughs> no, and and I'm, I'm 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 a person I like to, and I I think um by doing a lot of things in my life, it just opened my my mind. I, I always tell people that I will always be a nurse because being a nurse make me see the holistic approach, see things right. as a whole thing. Point. I don't have see things halfway or a quarter of a way. I see the whole picture, and I want to look at the picture, review the picture, and see what I can do to improve it. Okay, that makes mm-hmm. great sense. I yeah. mean, so talking mm-hmm. about the whole picture now, yeah. I mean, you know, you have like a really big district. I mean, you have places <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, yes. you have East New York, you have Canarsie, you yes. also have, you know, mm-hmm. Marine Park, Bergen Beach. So I love challenges. Yes. I love that. <laughs> um, but you also, you know, you, you have some, some backing mm-hmm. from some really powerful people, Assemblyman Charles Barron. He's you know, a Council dynamic Inez, person. Barron. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Mm-hmm. And that helps you, mm-hmm. particularly in East New York and, you know, places like that. But what are you doing in terms of, you know, the places that have a larger white population how are you we don't have that many you know white population (laughs) in the district let's keep it real it's less than 30 something percent but Mm -hmm. whatever the cause is i have some great people that i'm i'm gonna sleep with i have um odessa kennedy that's running for civil court judge and i have um laurie maslow that running for district leader so and and me for i mean for all the years that i've been i was the past president of 41st assembly district democratic club and and now more than ever i'm I'm sure people are looking at it and thinking about it. Say, Mercedes been tried and tested. She proved herself. So right. now there it goes. She's ready. Okay. <laughs> so okay. I'm ready to work with everybody. And and um, awesome. right now I'm consulting for a firm that's uh, happened to be Jewish uh, 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 company. I have black company. I have you know Russian company. Whatever I can do to help. And people knows my heart. And I'm a fair person. And I truly believe whatever I do, it comes with the with the love of the people first. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do you, do you think that um, sometimes you see these intergenerational senior center, centers where like they mix like grand you know elders seniors with young kids and they try to learn from each other I you know I've heard of that as a model mm-hmm. do you think that there's a model where the Jewish neighborhoods of uh, Bergen Beach mm-hmm. and Mill Basin that's part of the district mm-hmm. would would somehow integrate with the East New York Brownsville I know that uh, Assemblyman Barron he, he's a black nationalist, which is fine, but would would you, since you have his backing, mm-hmm. would you be willing to mix the constituents? I mean, I, I, I'm good at that. As a matter of fact, I remember when I was for, uh, president of 41st Assembly District Democratic Club, the attendance was increased tremendously because I'm able to get people together to have oh, a good. conversation. And uh, I don't see color. To tell you honestly, a lot of people say like a rhetoric for me is a fact. I love people, I have the love for people, and I want to improve life before I, I pass my journey. And um, I've been able to work with everybody and anybody. And they're talking about um, Charles. Charles, at least you know who you're dealing with. Charles yeah, is Charles. Very straightforward. You, yes, very straightforward, straightforward, very consistent. Because in politics, you don't get that. 
uh, people say things just for convenience to get in office. That's they say true. anything and everything. That's true. And that's I have seen that. Issues and that's why I have respect for him. And uh, and as you can see, um, his wife, which has happened to be his wife, right. is at the same level as him. Because Charles is is unique. Yes, and we is. each unique, but he's unique. He has his way. And then when he tells you yes, and you, you know it's yes. And then yes. when he's working with some, because now we were saying that, um, okay, Charles is this, Charles is extremist. But Charles is not. Charles is, is making sense for his people. He see what's going on. He he lived in the era where it's very, it's a, it was a struggle. Right. So uh, uh, now uh, we have to talk yeah. Black Panther. And then now what do we have to talk about? What do we call it? Or, well, Black, Black, Lives Ma- Black Lives Matter. That's right. Black Lives Matter. That's right. That's your yeah. show. I wouldn't let you do to say. <laughs> uh, so now we have to deal with that because um, different but times. You also have to understand Marine Park and Canarsie has a lot of cops. Mm-hmm. That's like a big cop neighborhood. There's a lot of people mm-hmm. in the NYPD that live in your district. I, I'm a member of uh, um, Homecrest Civic Association. Right. right now, I'm in a in in the area where I go to the meeting to that extreme, to over here, mm-hmm. to over there. I'm able to sit with people and have a real conversation. And and right now, I can tell you, I'm very pleased. They see the opportunity for me to be the elected official, and I'm pleased. Whether it's black, yellow, and green, I'm getting the support, yeah. and I'm happy and pleased, and be and I'm ready to work. So you see yourself as a uniter. I yes, like I am. <laughs> and then, as a matter of fact, when we had the Canarsie uh, Bridges, when uh, um, Evram hacked, was calling the first person he called to be on the uh, on the, you know to to represent the board in in Canarsie that was me because he said you can really make people sit down and talk and I appreciate that as a nurse that's what I do it's an I represent quality. everybody it's an yep. excellent quality yeah right. so yeah. where do people find you if they want to perhaps give money or support your campaign I love what that I love yeah. that you know in campaign yeah. I think yeah. I want everybody to invest. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I am on 9712 Flatlands Avenue. It's right across from Holy Family. Uh, we open doors for people. We open from 10 o'clock to 6, 7 o'clock. And um, I ha- I'm represented right now by um, the Advents Group, 39 Broadway. So I'm sure everybody can Google that. And I welcome that, the support. This is great. This is a journey that I've been waiting to kind of like there's a path of my life that I have to take. And I, I truly feel like I, I would make a difference in my community. And um, like I said, I work with everybody. And t- this is no, nothing different for me from East New York. When I, I, I represent East New York as a nurse, go to the home and I go to a board park and I go to Ship's Head Bay to, re- to, to be in people's home. I've been to almost everybody's home I can imagine in Brooklyn. <laughs> like so therefore, oh, if I'm in their home, <laughs> so, so as a nurse... And, and, and as a community leader, been on community board and past president of 41st Assembly District uh, Democratic Club and TJ Club. So therefore, I think I've been in, I've been, been around. Yes. So I've been around long enough to know what's going on. That's yeah. excellent. And time is for Mercedes to be the next senator yes. of okay. New York, 19th Senatorial District. Mercedes, thank, thank you so much mm-hmm. for joining us. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Thanks.